Good morning to you all. Uh, this is Brenda Amuke. I'm your lecturer. I've been taking you through library administration and routines. Uh, today we are going to handle weeding of library stock. My contact is available, chosen Brenda. You can contact me on email, chosenbrenda at gmail.com or brenda.amuge at uict.sc.ug. So weeding is the process of regularly re removing outdated and relevant library resources. It is a systematic removal of library resources from any collection, any library collection, using a selected criteria. So in all libraries, in most cases, when the you, you've gotten some books that are worn out, some books that are no longer used, some books that no longer and are no longer circulating in the library, that's when weeding is actually required. Weeding has two types. It has informal weeding and then the formal weeding. The informal weeding is an ongoing, pro, an ongoing process where torn, tattered, and defaced materials are deselected as they are returned to the school library or any other library. Then we have the formal weeding. The formal is a planned one. It's a planned rotational process that sees each section of the library targeted on a regular basis. This formal weeding is planned usually uh, in a collection development policy. The administration plans on how the weeding is going to be done. So that's when the formal weeding is done. Why do we weed? What is the importance of weeding? Why should a librarian weed the library stock? A librarian should weed to enhance the library's reputation for reliability and up-to-date resources to update the resources for the library users to be able to get what exactly they need. Then another reason why they should weed is to make the collection more appealing. Imagine a, a library that has, uh, uh, that, that has shelved torn books, books that don't have some pages, books that are of um, the 80s in the library of today, I'm sure users would not be comfortable with it. So the reason why you should read as a librarian is to make your collection more appealing. Another reason is to save space, is to save space. Why should a librarian keep books that are, that are in bad shape, that are no longer in use, that have stayed on the shelf for a long time without being taken up. So as they weed, they create space for more new and up-to-date collection. Another reason why they should weed is to, is to present a better case for a budget increase. For, for, for instance, when you've weeded and there's enough sp there's space or there are spaces in the library shelves, it means there's need for new collection and that calls for a budget increase. Another reason why you should weed is, uh, is that it, it is time consuming maintaining heavily damaged books. Um, some librarians would rather keep on maintaining, they would rather keep on uh, taping the books that are spoiled uh, it is really time consuming doing all that. So it's best that the person weeds them out and then uh, find ways of replacing them with better collection. Another reason for weeding is increasing use of electronic, uh, is increasing use of what? Electronic resources. 
uh, these days as we are going digital, uh, most libraries, uh, if you would find the collection has been turned into uh, soft copies uh, into the library system. So they might not really need to have some of those repeated collection onto the shelves if they are, you can put them on the what? On the library system, on the integrated library system. Another reason is shortage of shelf space. The space might not be enough uh, for a, a certain collection. That's where you find some books are packed somewhere or some are in the boxes. So in order to save the, the, the shelf space and create room for what? For new books, for future collection. Uh, then weeding simplifies location of materials. When you weed, it is easier for the students, it is easier for even the librarians themselves to locate materials other than having all packed up in, in, a, in a shelf and most of them are not really needed. So hence weeding. Then the cost of maintaining the books on the open shelves is also another reason for weeding. Maintaining these books on the shelf is quite costly. For instance, those that are eaten up by insects, those that are, are spoiled due to the uh, due to the environment, maybe for many other reasons, maintaining them is quite costly, and so it's it's better to weed them out and come up with a better, a new and better collection. When should the weeding be done? The weeding should be done yearly at least each year we should be able to weed of the collection in order to maintain the quality the quality of the library then it should also be done it can also be done continuously on a day-to-day -day basis as materials are carded and shelved every day as the routines are going on each single day as the librarians are shelving and carding they can do the weeding. As they shelve, they can see maybe a book that needs to be weeded and the weeding is done continuously. Then inter intermittently, it can also be done basing on the collection development policy of a, of a particular school, if it is a school library, if it's a medical library, for the hospital policy basing on the policy that was developed by that institution concerning weeding of collection. It can also be done periodically as part of an entire professional day when you locate the weeding, uh, sorry, when you allocate uh, the weeding time for the entire collection on a particular day. How much should be weeded in the collection, in the entire library? According to the American Library Association, at least 5% of the collection should be weeded annually. At least 5% is recommended. Uh, since an, the, average, the average lifespan of a book is 10 years, but in those 10 years, usually there are so many factors that can make that book, uh, that, that can affect the book, that can lead to what? Weeding of, of that particular material. So it should be 5% of the collection that should be weeded at least annually. The weeding process. Let's, at, let's look at the weeding process. The first step is to set, up, set criteria for weeding. In this, in this stage, you should be able to uh, consult the collection development policy if the library has that policy. And if the library does not have a policy, consider guiding documents or consider 
creating the policy yourself as a librarian. At this stage, this is the stage when uh, a librarian consults any guiding documents that are available. Then after consulting the available documents, you consider your library and its users. What is the mission and the goal of the library? You consider all those facts in the process of reading. You consider also the users, their demands and their needs. You consider several factors in this stage of reading. Then after considering that, putting that into consideration, um, the items in the library collection should also be the next step to handle. Availability of better materials. Uh, are, are there better materials that you can replace with what is there? Are there funds to handle, to, to, to purchase the needed materials? Then, what is the impact of removing an item from your collection? You, you can think of all those factors at, at this stage. You think of all those factors at this stage of the weeding process. Then, the next stage is uh, you consider other services. You consider the cooperative agreements with other libraries. If, you, if the library has uh, such agreements, uh, the availability of more current information on the internet is also considered. What do you uh, understand by cooperative agreements? Uh, these are agreements between one library and another. For, for example, UICT library and uh, MOBS library can come up with an agreement to maybe share some kind of uh, some information or some data concerning certain topics or subjects, subject matters. Or students can access, maybe can access their system, their library system. And the MOOC students can also access the UICT library system. So all that, all those are the agreements you can look at. If they are available, then is there a need for weeding or not? Are there current information on the internet that you can consider before you, uh, you work on the weeding process? The weeding process continues. Processing weeded items. In this process, in this in this um, stage, the integrated library system, the ILS, should be able to generate reports to help with weeding. In this case, the library system, you can use uh, information through the library system to find out reports, statistical reports on different kind of uh, materials. It could be fiction. You can run a report on fiction. When, we, when were they, when did they, when were they circulated? How often have they been circulating? And all those details to help you through your weeding process. Then you can delete weeded items from the library catalog. This is the next stage. You delete whatever is not necessary. In the, Whatever you have decided to let go you make sure even the catalog it is not available uh, so that uh, you avoid uh, repetition of again bringing in the same kind of materials then from there you dispose the weeded items you you dispose them in different ways of uh, basing on the policy of disposing these items. It could be through donation like we shall see earlier, we shall see later. It can be by selling and all those, depending on what the library has agreed upon for disposing the weeded materials. Then, can think of giving away weeded items. There are some weeded items that are still in good condition, but maybe they are not for that particular level, the level of your users. So you give them away to those that might need them. It is more like donating. 
It is also another way of disposing weighted items. Let us look at the factors considered when weeding. For all materials, the date is very crucial when you're weeding. You look at the date it was published. Was it published those days maybe of your of maybe your grandparents? Was it published uh, of recent? Or is it new? Uh, so you consider that the that you, you look at the copyright and consider the date before you let go of that particular item. Then look at the author. The author is also another factor. Is he, is he or she still read? Is is the author popular, or is he now outdated? Is is no longer popular? You look at such scenarios. Then consider also the publisher is also another factor. Is the book self-published, or by a press that maybe did not look at? the printing and the editings and all that properly, you consider all those things. Then you should also consider the physical condition. How is the, the physical condition of the book? Is it, is it, uh, are, the, are, are all the pages still there? Is it so old that it can no longer be used? Look at how, is it really an attractive for example, for cases of, of juvenile collection, children's books, are they attractive? Are they, uh, is there a color? Are they, are they still read at the, at the moment? Look at their physical uh, state. Then you should also look at the additional copies. Are more copies available in better condition before you get rid of that book? Does it have other other copies of it that are in good condition? That is also a good factor to look at. Then you should also look at other books on the same subject in the collection. If that particular book is popular, but it has it is it is destroyed and damaged, are there other books on the same subject in the collection? You look at such before you consider getting rid of the book. Then look at the expense of replacement. Was this book expensive? For example, um, you can think of an, uh, these encyclopedias, they are quite expensive. So you look at the expense of replacing. Is the budget enough for it before you think of weeding it out? Um, then consider shelf, shelf time. How long on the shelf? How long has this book spent on the shelf without circulating? It means this book is not needed by your users, so it should be weeded out. Those are some of the factors you should look at. Then the relevance of the subject to the community. Is it of interest? Is your user population interested in, in, in that particular subject? So you look at all that before you can think of uh, weeding it out. Then you can also consider cooperative agreements with other libraries, like we had talked earlier. You consider the if you, uh, the agreements you have with other libraries on that. You continue with the factors considered when weeding for juvenile and young adult. Materials. This one goes for those in children libraries. The main thing you, you should first look at is the format. The format of the book. Paperbacks are always preferred for, for children uh, kind of books. The paperback should be, uh, it's better than the other, the soft ones that can be torn easily with children. Then look at the reading level. Is it too high or easy for the for the patron? Can the children? Uh, you look at your population. The kind of children who are coming into the library. Is this is this book book of their level? For example, the the little ones prefer picture books. 
so you should also consider that. Then uh, consider the current interest in the subject matter. The current in interest in the subject matter. You should also consider colored illustrations. These are better off when you're dealing with children's books. The visual appeal, how is it looking like? That's when uh, you consider the illustrations, the colored illustrations, the pictures, all that which attracts the children to read, to get this book and read it. Uh, then you should also consider the jacket art. It is also very important when you're reading. Then finally, you can consider the use in school curricula. Uh, is this book really needed by the teachers? For example, uh, all the students themselves, the children themselves, uh, is it in the curricula of, the, of that particular school? You consider all those factors when you're dealing with children, books, or young adult materials. Um, let's continue with factors considered when reading. For periodicals, you consider the currency. Is it current? Periodicals are always like magazines and all that. Uh, the users prefer what is current. Whatever is not current might not really be liked. Unless when uh, the library policy uh, allows circulating of all the issues. Uh, should also consider the interest in circulating older issues. Um, does the uh, library policy allow older issues to circulate? Um, you can consider all that. Then consider indexing available. Is the periodical included in standard indexes? Is it available? So you consider all that. Consider also the full text availability in online databases. Will patrons find the articles needed for research in the library's online databases or not? Is it available or not? You consider all those factors when dealing with the periodicals. Um, then space available. Does the library have space to store older issues? that are not used on a regular basis. So all those factors are important when you're dealing with periodicals. What should be weeded? What should be uh, discarded or what should you let go when weeding? Let's look at poor content. It is important to look at poor content when we like to consider a material for weeding. In poor content here we look at outdated and obsolete information especially on subjects that change quickly. Whatever is outdated is poor content. Travel subject matter that uh, especially topics that are no longer of interest as well as titles related to outdated popular culture. Whatever is outdated is not popular and it is poor content. Mediocre writing style, material that was written quickly to meet popular interest that has passed. It was popular at one point but it's no longer popular at the moment or currently uh, popular. So that kind of writing should be discarded. Inaccurate or false information should also is also part of poor content. That is outdated information and sources that have been superseded by new titles or editions. Whatever con uh, content that maybe has got a new edition, it should be what? Uh, it can be considered for reading. Uh, then we we'll look at unused sets of books. Unused sets of books, it means that content is not needed by your users, by the library users, so it should also be discarded. 
let's continue with poor content poor content repetitive series also uh, should be considered for weeding those that are no longer popular should should be considered what for weeding uh, we talked of superseded editions editions that have all they've already written a, a new edition of it that particular one which you have in the library, it means you have to replace the, that uh, the old edition with the new edition. Hence, reading resources that are not on standard lists are also considered for reading. Materials that contain biased, racist, or se sexist terminologies or views, those are definitely not needed and that is poor content and it should be what discarded as well unneeded duplicates worn or tattered um, content that is has been duplicated and yet it is not circulating all that should be considered for weeding self-published or small press materials that are not circulating for example those especially if they were added as gifts that have been given to you, your library by maybe some other donors, those also should, should be actually considered and should be weeded out of the library stock. We can also look at materials, books of poor appearance, books that are no, are no longer appealing should be considered for weeding. These books are worn out, rugged items, all that should be considered for weeding. Poorly bound or poorly printed editions are also good for weeding. Rebound editions that are worn and shabby or have torn pages, all those, you should consider them for weeding. Items that are dirty, shabby, warped, or bug in infested, or otherwise marked up. All those may be uh, edited by patrons or users. All those should be what? Discarded for new collection. Books with very small print or poor quality pictures. All that should be what? considered for discarding because they will not help your library users. Um, we can still continue uh, on the poor appearances. Some of them like scratched CDs or DVDs, brittle film or magnetic tapes, all those should be considered for discarding or weeding media that is beaten up from wear or has broken or missing parts all that should leave the library books with the yellowed brittle torn taped or missing pages should all be discarded books with dusty jackets or cover art that is dated especially on children's and young adult books should be what we did Um, other materials that should be considered for weeding are unused materials. Items that have not circulated within the past three or five years are not actually used for reference or in-house research. All those should be weeded out. Duplicate copies that are no longer needed regardless of condition should be weeded out. Periodicals that are not indexed should be what? Read it out. Periodicals that are available in full text databases should be weeded out to avoid crowding space, a shelf space. Unused volumes in sets or series should also be weeded out because it means they are not relevant to your users. And the users are the, are the most important. Unused materials 
some of them are unneeded titles, titles that are not needed in the library. Um, should also consider them for reading. Materials on the hot topics that were popular more than five years ago should be also what considered for reading. More books um, that are needed on any single subject are also what or can also be considered. Formats that are no longer popular in, the, in your community, especially for cases of children books, those should be discarded. Materials that material that is no longer important to the collection uh, should also be what considered for reading. Uh, when reading, we should read the worst. You'll, you'll meet this acronym most of the time, and it is always used by librarians when reading. Worst uh, stands for worn out, out of date, rarely used, or supplied elsewhere, available, uh, travail, and fetish. All that is what you can consider uh, when weeding your what? Your materials. You weed the worst kind of material and you weed according to that, that acronym. Then what should not be weeded? What should the library keep? What should not be discarded? These are some of those that should not be discarded. For example, classics and award winners, except, except when a more attractive edition is available or when there are too many copies on the shelf. That's when you should read classics. Otherwise, they should not be weeded. Titles appearing on standard or current core bi uh, bibliographies should, should stay in the library. Local and Ugandan history, for the sake of Uganda, if you're Ugandan librarian, uh, should not be uh, weeded or replaced. Unless it can be replaced with new copies of, of the same. Unless for a scenario where the book is, is destroyed physically, it should not be weeded. School annuals and other publications for your campus uh, should not also be with it. Unique content or format or illustrations also should not be with it. Fairly and folk tales, fairies, fairy, fairy and folk tales, those stories, children's stories should not be with it. Fiction should not be with it. Biography. People's biography should not be with it because those are special kind of books you will not find elsewhere. Fine arts should not be with it. Sports with the exception of rule books should not be with it. Poetry and literature should stay in the library. Languages should also uh, not be with it. Religion should not be with it. You can't without a Quran or Bible, you can't. The materials that are not subject to rapid change should also what? not be weeded. Let's look at disposal of weeded materials. How should you dispose a, a, a weeded material as a librarian? Whatever you consider for weeding, how should you dispose it of? There are five main ways of disposing of library materials that have been weeded. One of them is selling it. You can sell it to the public at a large annual scale or uh, exhibition or to a, a used book dealer. There are many you can sell it there. Or you can trade it with another library or with a used book dealer for a book your library can use. Another disposal, disposal method is donating you can donate the book 
to a nursing home, hospital, adult or juvenile correctional, um, charitable institution, you can donate to those particular points. Or you can recycle that particular material by utilizing a local contractor, perhaps in cooperation with local government agencies, um, you can dispose it through recycling. Or you can just destroy it. You can destroy the book by burning in, a, a, in an incinerator or by tossing it into the trash. Destruction is the last resort if the books cannot be recycled or sold. So there are basically five ways of disposing with it materials. Let's look at barriers to weeding in libraries. One of them is emotional attachment with the collection. Most librarians are too attached to a certain book that you feel it should not be disposed of or it should not be discarded. So they end up keeping what users actually do not need just because they have emotional attachment to the collection. Failure to distribute the unused material is also another barrier to weeding. Failure to draw the criteria for weeding the, the material objectively, that is failure to come up with the weeding guidelines. Failure to approach academic departments, authorities, or audit for, ma for making proposals for weeding of library materials, those that were once purchased incurring heavy expenditures. That is also one barrier. Non-cooperation or coordination from academic departments. Some departments might not cooperate with the librarians on this matter, especially when it comes to budgets and all that. So it creates a barrier to weeding. Then lack of attention and time in to isolate unused books in the library. Since the weeding process takes time, sometimes librarians might not really have that time to do the weeding, hence a barrier in weeding. Let us look at the crew method in 10 steps. What is crew? Crew is the continuous review, evaluation, and weeding. That is an acronym for continuous review, evaluation, and weeding. Uh, this method integrates all the processes into one smooth, streamlined, and ongoing routine that assures that all the necessary indirect services are accomplished in an effective way. Uh, the CREW method uses an acronym MAST to indicate when an item would be removed from the collection. MAST is also used apart from WAST, MAST is used together with WAST as we talked earlier. MAST stands for misleading and factually inaccurate, ugly, worn out, beyond mending and rebinding, superseded by a new edition or a better source. T stands for travail of, of no discernible literally or scientific merit, uh, whatever has no merit, irrelevant to the needs of the uh, users or the interests of the users. I stands for irrelevancy. E stands for elsewhere. The material may be easily borrowed from another source. So you consider MAST. Crew uses MAST, okay? an acronym of MAST, to consider removal of library co collection. So let's start with the steps of the crew method. 
step one, make weeding a part of the policy. Make it a part of the policy. Policies define action and decisions. So when you have, for example, a collection development policy, you can easily start on the weeding process when the policy is already drafted. Step two, gather usage statistics of your library collection, for example, from the integrated library system. Uh, you can get reports. These reports allow you to analyze and document areas of, of greatness, uh, oh, sorry, areas of greatest usage and most need. So these reports are, are gathered, uh, statistics of these reports are gathered and they guide you at this stage. St step three, build weeding into a year's calendar. Make it part of the calendar so it will be easier for you. Set priorities and schedule the time when you will need, when you will weed the collection. Step four, gather the following materials on a book track at the shelves to be analyzed. One of them is shelf list drawer or computer printout, disposal slip, marking pen, weeding guidelines, a computer printout of the, sec of the section being reviewed, a blank notepad or sticky notes, a pen and a colored pencil, a shelf marker, a copy of the overview chart of crew formulas should have a copy of the of the formulas crew has its formulas an empty book cart and then supply of disposal slips all those materials should be available at this stage step five study the subject areas in your collection as a whole then one by one Examine each item in turn, checking for physical condition, last circulation date, copyright date, and appropriateness for your collection. Step 6. Check the library's holdings by taking inventory. While you are reading, you may also choose to take inventory. Step 7. Check the pooled books against the standard indexes. The library holds. Step 8. Treat the books according to their disposal steps. Those that need binding, those that need discard, discarding, those that need replacement, and those that need recycling. So you should treat them according to disposal steps. Step 9. Replacement, checking, and ordering. This is where I now you you, you think of how you're going to replace the books that you you're weeding out at the conclusion of your work in a specific area select and order replacements step 10 set up displays displays for low circulating high quality books that would benefit from better exposure so this is the final stage of the crew method Thank you very much. Good luck.